You find your dog on the floor, shivering, shaking and convulsing, with foam coming out of the mouth and it looks like it's busy dying. Quick, your dog is suffering from a seizure. This is what you need to do and this is what you need to do. Hey guys, Dr. Peter. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa and in this video I'm going to explain exactly what seizures in dogs are, how to recognize when your dog is suffering from a seizure and what exactly you need to do when your dog is seizuring in order to potentially save his life. Okay, let's jump right into it. If you've ever seen a dog seizuring, you'll agree that it can be quite a disturbing sight. Now it's really important to first understand the differences between a seizure, class of seizures, epilepsy and status epilepticus as these different levels of seizures all have different consequences for your dog. A seizure, also known as a convulsion or fit, occurs due to abnormal brain activity where the balance between stimulatory and inhibitory impulses to nerves is disturbed causing a spontaneous electrical discharge to occur. Think of it as a lightning bolt during a thunderstorm. Seizures often occur during times of changes in brain activity such as during feeding or excitement or as a dog is falling asleep or waking up. Affected dogs may appear completely normal in between seizure episodes. Epilepsy is a term used to describe repeated episodes of seizures which are often unprovoked and recurrent. Now epileptical seizures are characterized according to which area of the brain is affected and can be either focal or localized called petite mole where only a certain small area of the brain is affected or generalized called grand mole where a larger area of the brain is affected. Obviously focal seizures can eventually develop into generalized seizures if left untreated. Idiopathic epilepsy is a seizure of unknown origin and is common to find in certain breeds such as German Shepherds, Golden Retrievers, Beagles and Border Collies between the ages of 6 months and 6 years. A cluster seizure describes any situation where a dog has more than one seizure in consecutive 24 hour periods. And finally, status epilepticus describes any seizure that lasts for more than 5 minutes. This is a very serious and life threatening situation and requires immediate medical attention. Otherwise, dog may die from cardiac and respiratory arrest or suffer irreversible brain damage. Now seizures typically consist of three components. Number one, the preictal phase, which is a period of altered behavior where the dog will typically hide, appear nervous or seek the owner's attention. It may be listless, whining or shaking and this may last from a few seconds to a few hours. This period precedes the seizure activity, kind of like the dog anticipates that something bad is about to happen. Number two, the ictal phase, which is extremely variable in appearance and can range from a mild changes in mental awareness, such as a dazed look, head shaking or licking of the lips, to a complete loss of consciousness and body function, where the muscles in the body move spastically and erratically. The dog usually falls over to its side, starts paddling, while seeming to be otherwise paralyzed. Urination, defecation and salivation may also often occur. And number three, the post ictal phase, which is the period immediately after the end of the seizure, where the dog typically shows confusion, disorientation, pacing, restlessness and even in some cases temporary blindness. Seizures are caused either by abnormalities inside the brain, called intracranial causes, or abnormalities outside the brain, called extracranial causes. Extracranial causes include toxicities, metabolic disorders, congenital conditions, organ failure, and systemic infections. Intracranial causes include lesions, hemorrhage, scarring, infections, and even cancer of the brain. Now, a seizure is not really a diagnosis in itself, but rather a symptom of an underlying condition which can have many different origins. Now, finding the exact underlying cause 
may sometimes be simple and straightforward, but in many instances, it requires extensive medical workups over an extended period of time, with the final diagnosis not made by finding the exact cause, but rather by eliminating all other potential causes, as mentioned earlier. Your vet will need to take a thorough history, perform a physical and neurological exam, some blood and urine tests, and in more advanced cases, an electrocardiogram, spinal fluid analysis, CT, and MRI may be necessary. Now, seizures that occur less frequent than every six weeks is not as worrisome, but they can eventually develop into more severe and more frequent seizures. Treatment usually only begins when an animal has more than one seizure a month, cluster seizures, or grand mal seizures, which are severe and prolonged in duration. The two most commonly used medications to treat and prevent seizures in dogs are phenobarbital and potassium bromide. Newer anticonvulsants such as zonisamide, levetiracetam and omipatoin are also becoming increasingly more popular. Diazepam can also sometimes be used, but this is usually only when the seizure is actually occurring because it takes effect very quickly, but the drug doesn't last very long in the body. It is important to note that the aim of treatment of seizures is to control and not to cure. Treatment requires therapeutic monitoring by means of repetitive blood tests and clinical evaluations to assess the efficiency and potential side effects of the treatment. And in many cases, epilepsy medication needs to be adjusted in terms of the dose and the type of medication used due to the buildup of tolerance over time. So, what should you do when your dog is having a seizure? Number one, stay calm. Despite the violent and dramatic appearance of the seizure, they are generally not painful and you should allow the seizure to just pass with minimal intervention. Number two, stay away from the dog's mouth or head. Contrary to popular belief, dogs do not swallow their tongues during a seizure. If you're going to put your finger or an object in the dog's mouth, you're not going to help him and you're probably going to end up being bitten very badly or you're just going to injure your dog. Number three, gently slide your dog away from anything that can potentially harm him, such as sharp objects or sharp corners. Number four, if the seizure lasts for more than a couple of minutes, your dog is at risk of overheating. So turn a fan on your dog and wrap a cool damp cloth around his paws to help him cool down. Number five, speak softly and reassure him by gently touching his back and hind limbs. Keep other dogs away, dim the lights in the room and close the windows in order to try and keep it as calm and quiet as possible. Number six, try to time the pre-ictal, ictal and post-ictal periods as this will be extremely useful to your vet later on when he or she needs to make a diagnosis. Number seven, call the vet as soon as the seizure ends as you will be able to ascertain how serious the dog's condition is. As a rule of thumb, every seizure that lasts for more than five minutes or if your dog has several seizures in a row while he's unconscious, you will need to take him to the vet as soon as possible. It is also recommended to not allow your dog to swim while he undergoes treatment in order to prevent accidental drowning. And be aware that most dogs that are on long-term antileptic treatment may gain some weight. So monitor your dog's weight and discuss an appropriate diet plan with your vet if necessary. Now, this is very important. Never ever approach a seizuring dog in an area where rabies is prevalent or if you are unsure of the dog's vaccination status. Rabies is a very fatal disease, which can have a similar presentation. So always, always put your own health and well-being first. Seizures in pets are very serious and can become progressive, but owners can be comforted by the fact that the tools for diagnosis and treatment are many. With sound veterinary practices and early treatment, can seizures often be controlled in a way in which quality of life is not adversely affected and pets can often carry on to live a long and happy quality of life. Thank you for watching this video. 
let me know down in the comments if you ever had a dog with seizure and what you and your vet did to help him cope with this condition. And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing so I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. As always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers!